Hey guys, today we're going to be working on a 2004 uh, Sportsman 500. Um, basically this thing came in a box. The story behind this is uh, the guy's kid uh, drove the thing, crashed it in the tree. This is all mashed up. Uh, I don't know, somehow, I don't know if he had it laying outside or what, but the motor blew after the kids ran and got dad and uh, came back, the motor was dead. Connecting rod was worn out. Um, don't know the whole story on it, but basically the thing came in a box. So I'm going to put this together, and I thought I'd quick uh, get a shot of this before I start tearing it all apart. Got the plastics off. Remember when I said uh, everything came in a box? Well, I really wasn't kidding. Got the, uh, the stator, the head. Over there I got a bunch of engine parts in that box back there. The flywheel, the cover. Um, so what I'm doing here, this is that motor I rebuilt in my last video. And because this is going into a 2004, we want to keep all electronics the same. I'm assuming this is off a 90 something because that's actually off the 425. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And we'll put the 04 stator on. And the matching flywheel. You want to keep that all together because uh, sometimes the insides are different. And we'll throw that on. So I got the front end together. Um, as you can see here, when the kid hit that stump, this is all banged up. Like I said, this is all kinked and mashed. So if you ever want to take that bracket off, there's a nut and a bolt here. I still got to tighten those down. Nut and bolt here. And that uh, goes into the radiator support also. And then there are two bolts down here that bolts into. And then uh, you'll probably have the uh, plastic side shields that that'll come off too. So yeah, the, the front's done. So now I'm about ready to drop my motor in, but uh, before I do that, I want to make sure that I get my starter in place because it'll be easier with the engine out of the machine to put the starter in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm probably going to drop the motor in. I normally wouldn't do it from this side, selling the engine, but uh, that's the way the guy that took it apart did. So I'm just going to try to slide it back in that way. So, it did work, it was a pain. So now I want to get the my back bolts lined up in the holes. So I got the motor halfway in, so you got them holes back there. So we got to line that up with those two holes. And then you got your front mount. You line right up with it. Bolt sticking out. And while you're doing this, make sure uh, you don't pinch your wiring harness for your stator or anything like that. I'm gonna get my all that stuff out of the way. That's good. That's good. So what I like to do is uh, tighten the back bolts first because that's going to bring the motor back. And then uh, 
I put the top motor mount on that goes up here, and then I'll tighten the back, the front one. You want to be careful not to drop your bolts in the boot. So I just put the bolt in the boot and bring it over the top. This is your chances of dropping it. Get one started. The same thing on the other side. The last thing you want to do is uh, drop a bolt in your freshly rebuilt engine. I've done it before, but I caught it. I was able to throw a magnet down there, so learn from my mistakes. So I'm going to have to tighten that down. So like I was telling you, this thing came in a box, so I'm still kind of searching for parts. Uh, I got to look for the, uh, the ground strap actually for this, but I'm going to get one bolt started. Finding out, you know, when you buy somebody else's project, hopefully they've tagged and bagged everything decent so you can find everything. All my stuff came in a plastic bin, so I'll be searching. So yeah, on your top bolt here will go your ground strap and that'll strap up here somewhere. And this is another reason why I like to leave that bottom bolt loose because you're going to want to move the engine back and forth to get... Uh, this little nut back here with your ground strap on it. Okay, so after I got that motor mount hooked up, I hooked up my exhaust, put my donut in, um, got my bolts in, and uh, let's go around this side. All right, let me uh, tell you a, a quick tip. So go ahead and put the motor mount on first and then do the boot because uh, if you put the boot on first and then the motor mount it's hard to get that bolt tucked up underneath there and uh, I just wanted to show you this so you got that uh, anytime you do a motor swap um, make sure you have the right temperature sensor in right there this uh, particular temperature sensor on the old 4 has two wires coming in and uh, the one I had in there only had one. So I pulled the uh, temperature sensor out of the uh, other head and I put it in there so that uh, that works. Uh, I got everything else uh, hooked up. I got my starter, positive and negative. I got my clutches. Um, now you got your two oiler hoses down here. And uh, always keep in mind that uh, when you're looking at your oil reservoir, you look towards the bottom on the inside, there's a hose, the bottom hose goes towards the top inlet of the engine. The top hose goes to the bottom. Uh, I bought a four-wheeler once and uh, the motor blew and the guy couldn't figure out why the motor blew after he replaced it. Well, he had uh, mixed up the oil lines, so there was no oil going into the engine. So I thought I could point that out to you guys, just... Uh, just a little reminder, not that you guys screw that up. Um, I just got to clean the carb up. And uh, she should be about ready to fire up. So stay tuned. Listen to this baby roar. Here's a quick shot of what I'm trying to tell you about. Bottom hose goes to the top. Top hose from the reservoir goes to the bottom. And one more thing, don't forget to hook up your uh, coolant lines down here. And uh, when you go to fill your radiator, there's a bleeder screw right here. So crack that open, let the air rush out. Once you see a little coolant trickle out, close that up. Keep topping it off. What I like to do is I'll squeeze this radiator hose 
and uh, try to get some uh, coolant back up through the radiator. And then when I go to fire this thing up, I'll leave the radiator cap off, make sure uh, coolant circulates. And uh, that way uh, all the air is bled out of the coolant system. Uh, if you get the air pocket in there and you forget to do that, you might have overheating issues. So, like I said, uh, just got to clean the carb up. Uh, this thing must have been sitting for a while. This is an HO. She's pretty crusty in there. I'll give this thing a good cleaning. And uh, once I'm uh, done with that, I should be about ready to go. Hey, so I just got my carburetor hooked up. Uh, about ready to get this bad boy fired up. We'll show you what this 425 converted into a 500 does. So here, hold my beer while I pull start it. Yes, it can be done. <laughs> 